Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about a very <laughs> interesting topic. So I was scrolling through my Instagram timeline and I saw a repost from Libs of TikTok who reposted a video of a first grade teacher talking to, I believe, uh, the school board or the, or the council in her city advocating as to why the pride flag, the rainbow flag, which represents sexuality and now gender identity, why that flag should be allowed to be hung in the classrooms within her city or her state. And she goes on to explain why it's so important for that representation and it's so important for that flag to be seen by kids so that kids in her classroom, first grade, why they should feel represented by that flag, which represents, again, sexuality sexual preference, gender identity. I mean, do I even need to explain why that would be a problem for six-year-olds and why that's not appropriate for six-year-olds? Do I need to even explain it? Probably so. <laughs> so rather than me going through the video here on YouTube and breaking it down, I literally just posted a video breaking down the problems with this situation over on TikTok. So I figured, let me just repost what I just posted on TikTok, hence why I'm wearing the same outfit. <laughs> let me repost what I posted on TikTok here on YouTube because it's relevant. And I also know that some of you guys don't have TikTok or don't follow me on TikTok. So this would be relevant for this video in case you haven't seen what I posted over there about an hour ago. So with that said, let's watch this video together. And then after it's done, we can have a more open dialogue and discuss more in depth why, uh, <laughs> This teacher has got it all wrong. So without further ado, let me play this video for you guys that I just posted explaining this situation and why I disagree with it. I've been a first grade teacher for 16 years. I'm here in support of this bill to make rainbow flag bans prohibited. What does a rainbow flag mean to my students, my classroom? Here are some words from my first grade babies. It means my teacher will stand up for me. It looks like the flag's at my house, so I feel home. It means we all are here together. So this teacher is trying to advocate for why rainbow flags should be hung within the classroom and why it shouldn't be banned. From her perspective and her baby's perspectives in the sixth grade, which by the way are about five and six year olds, that the rainbow flag represents, my teacher will stand up for me, it looks like the flags in my house, and we are all here together. Now here's a problem with that. That's all nice and dandy, right? But that's not actually what the flag represents. The rainbow flag is supposed to represent sexuality, sexual preference and now gender identity it's supposed to be a flag celebrating those things which is why they call it a pride flag right it's supposed to be about your pride so the fact that she's trying to redefine what the flag means and create this sort of generalized community statement about why that flag is necessary doesn't make any sense to me because you can have a safe feeling in a classroom by just being a good teacher who creates a safe space for your babies without having flags that represent sexuality and the fact that she says, well, these flags represent flags that are hung at the home, that makes them feel like they're at home, again, is a really bad argument because what if a child comes from a very religious or spiritual home where they have Bible verses on the walls hanging up in their room? Are you then going to say that it is okay to have Bible verses and religious artifacts in a classroom because it makes a kid feel at home? No. So why are we doing the same when it comes to sexuality? My students feel the importance of windows and mirrors. I want every child, family, and staff member to have a clear visual of inclusion and safety in the community I build. You know how you do that? You just be a good teacher that teaches your students how to read, write, and how to behave in the classroom respectfully between each other. That's how you do that. You don't need a flag to represent sexuality to convey that message. We know students, families, and staff members need to feel safe in order to learn thrive and continue to share their talents with us. So you're saying the only way that a student can feel safe in a classroom is if they see a rainbow flag that represents sexuality and gender identity in the classroom, right? So what if a student who is, again, religious says that they need to feel safe in the classroom and the only way to feel safe is if they see the Quran or if they see the Bible somewhere in, in, in the classroom? They need that representation in order to feel safe. Are you going to go out of your way to make them feel safe by conveying that spiritual message? Because if the answer is no, then I have to ask the bigger question, why are we accommodating sexuality and sexual preference in a classroom with six-year-olds in order to make them feel safe? My rainbow, ram, my rainbow flag stands for welcoming spaces, trust, resilience, compassion, joy, collaboration, and community without judgment. Again, you can convey all of those attributes without hanging a flag that represents sexuality. I will always have agency to represent all communities in my classroom. 
it's important my students see their own and their family's identities in my space. So a kid has to see all of their family's identities in a classroom in order for them to feel safe. I'm sorry, but this sounds like a very disingenuous argument in order to make a bigger point about a political position that you have. These are six-year-olds who at this point shouldn't even understand what sexuality is because they're six. So how about we just teach kids to respect each other, to behave in the classroom, and to remind them that the classroom isn't a place for politics. A classroom is a place for students to learn how to write and how to read and how to do math. <laughs> That's it. My students, especially those whose stories are often left out, must feel represented and important and it seems absurd that someone could take away that humanity from my students. No, actually what's absurd is asserting that six-year-olds need to feel represented by sexualities that they don't have at that age. What's absurd is trying to push that type of agenda onto children who, again, are so impressionable, who will not understand the complexities of sexuality at that age, yet you want flags representing sexualities to be displayed across the classroom because maybe some of those kids have very liberal parents who do that. Well, what about the conservative kids who have conservative parents who don't do that? Where is their representation? See, if you can't represent every single different type of child, then you can't pick and choose who gets to feel represented by their family's politics. So a piece of clarity from a former first grader, now 18, who still comes back to my safe space. Our rainbow flag means we'll always belong. Thank you for hearing my testimony. Again, that sounds more like a political position that she has, that she is trying to convey within the classroom because she can. When I was in first grade, second grade, third grade, sexuality was never brought up in the classroom because it was inappropriate, because it had no place within the classroom, because we were six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Nowadays, you have teachers professing what their sexuality and gender identity is. Again, I come from a time where we didn't even know our teacher's first name because it was irrelevant. This right here seems more like affirmation for the teacher than for the children. And that's the problem that I have with this. Any questions? <laughs> I mean, wow, wow. You know, what kills me, like I said in the video, is how disingenuous this woman is, right? Like she's trying to act as though the only way to convey respectfulness and acceptance and love and a safe space, you have to have the rainbow flag everywhere. It has to be present in order for kids to feel safe, in order for kids to understand that she is a safe teacher, that she respects them, that she wants to help them grow and learn as people, right? The only way to do that is by displaying this flag, a flag whose sole purpose is to represent sexuality. That was the original flag, meaning now it's about everything else, right? Sexuality, now you got gender identity, and all types of different things that don't really have anything to do with sexuality it has now been added to the flag to include everything and everyone. Okay, fine. But why are we acting as though the only way to convey a respectful environment and a safe space for children, again, five and six-year-olds, the only way to convey that is with that flag. You can't do it any other way. It's impossible. I mean, that's what she's trying to convey, right? We need this flag for kids to feel safe. If a flag is the only way to make your children feel safe, then I need to question your skills as a teacher because your job as a teacher is to make every child feel safe in your presence, regardless of what is hanging up on your walls. But the fact that she's trying to say that, no, that flag needs to be seen. That flag has to be hung. That flag has to be represented in the school right next to the American flag. That is a political position that she's trying to push forward, right? But trying to make it so it's about the children. It's about their safety. And without that, children will not be safe. That is manipulation. And that is a lie. Point blank period. It is a lie and it is a push by the left to try to indoctrinate children, to try to influence children who are very impressionable to a certain belief system. Now again, whatever's happening in a child's home is between the parents who are raising them and that child. But like I said in the video, if you cannot take a child who is a Muslim or a Christian and you can't make them feel safe by displaying their religious beliefs and their family's religious beliefs, if you can't put that in a classroom because it's considered inappropriate, then you shouldn't be able to display pride flags all over a first grade classroom in order for children to feel safe. Because like she said in her argument, those kids wanna feel a sense of home. They wanna feel a sense of familiarity when they walk into that classroom, that it represents 
walking into their bedroom, walking into their, their parents' home. Well, what if a child's parents are not liberal? What if a child's parents does not believe that six-year-olds should even understand what sexuality is. See, when you have a flag like that, it opens a dialogue, right? It opens a discussion. Now kids are gonna be raising their hand to say, what does that flag mean? If a child isn't being raised to understand sexuality at six years old, which should be the norm, by the way, and they walk into a classroom where they see a rainbow flag, they're most likely going to raise their hand and ask, what does that flag mean? Because kids are going to ask questions. And so now you as a teacher are going to assert yourself to explain what the flag represents. And no, it does not represent coming together and being respectful and loving all. That's very nice and sweet, but that flag represents sexuality. Tell it like it is. Stop lying and stop trying to sugarcoat what it means in order to not sound like a predator. Because you do. So now you're going to open a discussion with a child about a flag representing sexuality and sexual identity and gender identity with a child who may not understand what that even means because their parents are smart enough not to push that agenda on their children. But now because you, a teacher, decided to bring that into your classroom, now you are opening up a discussion that a parent may not want their child to have. And now they have to have it, because now little Susie or little Billy are gonna go home and say, mommy, what does pansexual mean? What does bisexual mean? What is transsexuality? And now that parent has to have that uncomfortable conversation that they were not ready to have with their six-year-old because you as a teacher decided for the parent that it was appropriate to talk about because that's the only way to convey a safe space in the classroom. I call baloney. I call BS. You as a teacher are, again, trying to convey your position, your perspective, your beliefs, your political ideology, your political leanings onto a classroom of children who you want to influence. That's what this is about. And again, this isn't about being against anybody for having a certain sexual preference or for having gender dysphoria. That's not what this is about. So please understand that. This is about what is appropriate for children and what is not appropriate for children. And you cannot tell me that in this day and age, the only way to convey to a child that they need to be respectful in a classroom is by having pride flags don't pee on me and tell me it's raining. We all know exactly why she was pushing for that flag. Okay, we all know it's an agenda. I don't care what anybody says, it is an agenda. And again, I don't know many six-year-olds who even understand what sexuality is. We're not talking about junior high school. We're not talking about high school. We're talking about babies, as she said, first grade babies. Just graduated kindergarten. And now they're walking into a first grade classroom with a teacher who was more than willing to have a discussion about sexuality and sexual preference in order for that child to feel safe just in case they may have parents who are LGBTQIA. I understand wanting to represent all children's families, but it is literally impossible to do that without excluding other people. So instead of bringing different type of identities within the classroom, how about we just teach kids how to read, write, and do math? How about that? <laughs> is that possible without a certain agenda? Because like I said, if you can't bring the Quran or the Bible or Bible verses or spirituality within a classroom in order to make a child feel safe, then you shouldn't be able to do that when it comes to sexuality and political leanings. They go hand in hand together. The classroom is not a place for that. And that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this video. Do you agree with the teacher or do you think that she is way out of line and needs to be stopped? I vote that. Again, when I was a kid, I didn't even know my teacher's first name. Now we have teachers talking about their sexual identities and their gender identities the first day of class. How did we get here? If you enjoy my content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit my notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video. I'm available on all social media platforms under Curly Boy Chuck. Search, find me, and let's connect. Until next time, peace.